Good morning. So today we are talking about Ayurveda integrated nutrition. I'm going to talk to you about my course that's coming up, but I'm also going to answer some questions that came into me by email, and I'm happy to answer any question that comes via the chat box. Because I want to be able to show you how we do address digestion in Ayurveda and how key and central and essential digestion is to health. So great. So if you just want to open up your chat box, drop in, say hello, let us know where you are. And then also, if you feel like sharing, how is your digestion today? Really glad to see Angela, Sarah, thanks for joining us. I'm so glad you joined us. Angela Sarah is part of the Ayurvedic Integrated Nutrition Training. And I'm so excited that she's a part of it. And I'm so delighted to be able to share here. Thank you. So first, I just want to say I've done this. I'm doing this as, an, as a webinar because the Ayurveda Integrated Training is really dear to my heart. I've run it two years now. This will be the third year coming up in 2021. It's, I feel like it's sort of part of the purpose of my life. I feel very mission driven with this. I feel very, very strongly that Ayurveda is not only a beautiful way for us to heal and to restore wholeness, but it is that reunification with nature that I think so many of us are seeking and maybe even longing for. We long for an experience to feel whole, to feel that we belong, to feel that we're interconnected, to feel that nature is supporting us and that indeed nature does love us and that she's reaching out all the time, all the time in every way to show us that love and that support, especially in her beauty and in her bounty, her food. So this course is something that I created because I'd really love to empower more people to share Ayurveda with the world. We see through Ayurveda that when any living system is restored to balance, any biological system in equilibrium can spontaneously heal itself because everything that is alive is encoded with this generative and regenerative power. Everything that's alive. And if that's true, that's true for individuals. That's true for humans. That's true for animals. That's true for plants and everything in nature. And if that's true, that, that means that through Ayurveda and the help that Ayurveda gives us in restoring balance, restoring equilibrium, restoring homeostasis, then when that balance is restored in the individual, it becomes like a morphic resonance that spreads out, that expands out spreading out that possibility for not only balance, but spontaneous healing for all. That means that the healing can come to the individual, it can come to the collective, and it can come even to our environment. And I just think when we look at all the problems in the world, how are we gonna, how are we gonna deal with it? And rather than burying our heads in the sand or running and depleting ourselves by trying to put out all these fires and try to feed all the people who are hungry, what if we could restore balance and help others to restore balance and by that create a wave of healing that goes out into the world? Those of you who have just joined us, welcome. We're just talking about the Ayurvedic Integrative Nutrition webinar. I'm going to talk about the webinar first and then I'm going to answer questions. And you can ask any question if you have no intention to even learn about the webinar or join us in the new year, that's fine. I'm really happy to share uh, with you today Ayurveda, especially to do with digestion. And so if you have a question around digestion, if we can help you there, it'd be great. Because if we can have a case study here today, then others will get to see you know, how we approach Ayurveda digestion and the health that arises when digestion is optimized, okay? <laughs> and I was talking about why I feel so strongly about sharing Ayurveda with the world, what I love so much about this training. I feel like it's a niche inside the Ayurvedic landscape whether you've never studied Ayurveda before or whether you've already done two, three years of training, this is a course that's designed to really focus on the key essence of Ayurveda, which is nutrition and digestion. Because Ayurveda says that if your digestive fire is strong, then that can help optimize your health. Weak digestion will lead to health issues. Digestion is the central engine, you could say, of our health. And so it's a central piece of Ayurveda. And yet a lot of Ayurvedic trainings only sort of skim the surface of food, nutrition, and digestion. So this goes into depth. This is something that you can apply to yourself, your family, your friends. 
but the training is designed to teach you to be a consultant, a coach, a counselor, an advisor. And I also give you my four seasonal cleanses. I also give you a community presentation. So you can teach classes if you want to teach at your yoga studio or your public library. And then you can also work, as I said, one-on-one -on -one as a consultant. So there's two parts. And the first part is really focusing on the fundamentals of Ayurveda, the fundamentals of digestion and nutrition, and really gets you up to speed with all that you would need to know in terms of, I'll come to that in a second, in terms of the essence of Ayurveda and, and Ayurvedic nutrition and digestion. I keep saying nutrition and digestion because really what we're talking about in Ayurveda is the essence of digestion. Ayurveda says not that you are what you eat, you are what you digest. I mean, frankly, you're not a grape or an apple. <laughs> you know, you're not what you eat because what you're eating gets digested into knees and joints and muscles and tissues, right? And organs and even your thoughts and your feelings are supported by what and how you're digesting. So Ayurveda very much focuses on optimizing digestion. And the reason I call it Ayurvedic integrative nutrition is we also cover how do we digest our feelings? How do we digest our experiences? How do we digest the overwhelming amount of information that's coming in at any given time? So we bring into this training practices that help, you could say practices of mindfulness, practices of meditation, practices that help us to digest all of our life experiences so that they can be metabolized into wisdom. So it's digestion across our life experience. It's not just the physical digestion, but we also cover mental, emotional, and even spiritual digestion in this course. Okay, so one last time. Hey, Simran, thanks for joining us all the way from Delhi late at night. And Carolina, Carolina in Italy. Another thing we talk about in the training, which I love to talk about, is food cultures around the world and how ancient food cultures always have some of that Ayurvedic wisdom within them. Let me just let some more people in. Beautiful. Okay. I have a little uh, presentation to show you. We'll go through that and then we'll go to Q&A and hopefully a case study. I will be uh, addressing those questions after my short presentation. It's just going to take 10, 15 minutes. All right. So let me go ahead and share my screen. So first again, let me say thank you for joining us. This is the Ayurveda Integrated Nutrition webinar. So I want to share with you about this webinar after which we're going to go to Q&A. This webinar is designed because I want to really share Ayurveda with the world. I want to make it affordable. I want to make it accessible. And I want to empower individuals to take it forward. I'm in that part of my life where I'm thinking about the legacy. These are legacy years. So all I really am thinking about now is what, what will I leave behind? And what, how can I make the world in one small little way, maybe a little bit of a better place? How can we reduce suffering? How can we create greater ease? How can we uplift? How can we show the world that this is still a really beautiful place where everywhere around you there is loving nourishment made available to you by our great Matabumi, our mother nature. So the Ayurveda Integrative Nutrition course, it's really a full one training, but I broke it into two parts because I thought there are different kinds of people with different kinds of backgrounds and needs. There may be people who only want to learn the first part, which is the nutrition, all the fundamentals of nutrition, Ayurveda first and then nutrition. So it's the basics of Ayurveda and it's the important essence of, of nutrition and digestion. They may want to share that with themselves, their family, their friends. They may not necessarily want to go on and be a professional Ayurvedic consultant. So that's part one. And there may be people who have already done a lot of deep study in Ayurveda. And what they want is to come into part two, where they can really learn the counseling and the consulting skills, where we really do a lot of case studies and a lot of practice on, on these you know, counseling skills. We really develop those practices, and really, really hone that so that people can really feel confident by the end of it. We also talk about how you're going to grow your business and what kind of tools and pieces parts that you're going to need for that. All right. So that's why it's divided into two parts. And then part three is to actually have an Ayurveda immersion in India. And that is a two week, 15 day trip to India. The first week is at an Ayurvedic clinic where we get to have rejuvenative therapies every day. We have classes in Ayurvedic cooking. There's also yoga and meditation available. I lean classes each afternoon. And uh, so that's really beautiful. And then from there, we go up into the 
the what's called the Western Ghats, the mountains of Kerala, where we're going to go up to a spice village and explore a spice, spice plantation, have lunch with a family. It's really quite a beautiful experience. And then from there, it's it's all downhill as we come down the mountain and, and we go and visit the backwaters of Kerala. So from then on, it's just enjoying the beauty and the peace of that beautiful, beautiful land. So if you did do all three, it becomes a 200 hour training. Part one is 75 hours, part two is 75 hours, and the final part is 50 hours. So you would get a certificate for 75 hours or 150 hours or 200 hours if you did all three. I wanted to address what I think is a primary question, which is what is the curriculum, but also how much, how much time is this, would this take for you weekly? I also want to address, you know, what would you get from this? One of the ways that I really like to teach Ayurveda, the way that I first learned Ayurveda was through what we call pratyaksha, through the direct experience, directly involving yourself with nature, directly experiencing the foods, the spices, the weather, the climate, even the herbs, and even some practices like the yoga, the exercise, the breathing, the meditations. How do those affect you? What do you learn from that, right? And so each and every, each and every course, we, the homework that is given is basically go out and experience these things. What are the five elements that you're experiencing in the world around you? How does that make the three doshas, right? How does this food affect you? How does that weather affect you? How does this season affect you? And then go and ask your friends, your family, what are they experiencing? So learn through direct experience first, and then learn through others' direct experience. And for that reason, we have a lot of group. We learn from one another. We do a lot of group discussion and a lot of group pratyaksha practices. So just as a reminder, what is Ayurveda? It's the science of nature and the wellness that is encoded in nature. It's also the reminder that you are nature, and it's the invitation to restore and optimize your relationship with nature. I feel like Ayurveda is the reminder that we're always in relationship with life itself. And it's an invitation to a more sacred and sumptuous experience of life. So it is about healing. It is about preventative medicine, but it's also even something bigger than that. It's a reminder that you are everything as mighty and majestic as anything you will find in nature. You are that. You have the power within you, not only to heal, but to help others heal. Not only to restore wholeness, but to remember that you are part of a larger whole. And that sense of belonging to this world, this beauty and this bounty is a really exalted feeling. And we can access that at any moment in any day, no matter what's going on, no matter what's in the news. The news, the good news is that nature is alive, it's radiant, and it is here to support you. So five elements are in nature. And there are, I'm going to go through this quickly. There are five elements in nature, three doshas. The five elements create three bioenergies, vata, pitta, and kapha. And then we have six tastes in our food, six categories of tastes. And those six tastes are made up of the five elements. We also have four states of agni. And agni is the digestive fire. There's the balanced agni. And then there's three states of imbalanced in agni. Ayurveda says that the fire in your belly, Jitara Agni, is the key to optimizing digestion. When we meet with somebody in an Ayurvedic consult, we don't want to just know what their dosha is. We want to know how is your digestion. Because how can we balance the dosha if we don't have optimized digestion? Right? So first and foremost, we need to know what your digestion is. Also because if digestion is impaired, that can lead to ama. What is ama? Ama is said loosely to be toxins in the body. Ama is said to be a sticky substance that gets into the tissues and gets stuck there and it's hard to get out. It causes stagnation, it causes blockages. It can cause doshic imbalance. But we cannot address the doshas until we have removed the ama. How do we remove ama? By optimizing the digestive fire. So even to detoxify the body, even to address the doshic imbalance, to restore health and wellness, first we have to optimize Agni. 
And that's why I've chosen to focus on what is the essence of Ayurveda? How can we make Ayurveda accessible to all, right? Affordable and accessible to all. Let's focus on your Agni and empower others to strengthen their own digestive power so that they can have that optimal wellness. And another thing that I think is interesting to think about, how often do we really notice our digestion? <laughs> One of the things that I think is interesting is that 70% <clears throat> of Americans have officially complained about their digestion. When I say officially, I mean, it's in the statistics, like they've gone to their doctor, they've called a health professional. 70%, that's way more than a majority, have complained of digestive issues. It's a very common problem. And that's another reason why I wanted to create this training is because this is a common problem. The common problem being not only that people have digestive issues, but that from that digestive issues, they will then go on to have a host of other health issues. And why is that true? It's true because we, have, we are so divorced from nature. We're divorced now, we're so separated now from natural healing, our natural ways, and even food coming from nature versus coming from a factory. And people are confused, they don't know what to do. And so more and more people who have the skills, not only health coaching, not only food, but people who have the skills in nutrition and digestion, more and more are gonna be necessary to restore health and balance to our world. So if you think about it, if you have a day where you have gut issues, if you have gas or bloating, if you have a day or a week or months, I know people who have this for years, it's so uncomfortable. And it's so frustrating to try to figure out what the problem is, right? And they go to all kinds of people will come to me after they've gone to five, six, 10 different specialists. And it's really, it's really sad to see how frustrating it is, how much pain they're in, how much discomfort they're in. But if you think about a day where you have had a meal and you had no discomfort, we almost just don't even notice. We don't notice unless we're noticing the absence of discomfort. And it just feels good. We can eat a meal and 15 minutes later, we have the clarity or the energy that we need to go on and do the next thing in our day, right? So what we're talking about is helping people go from discomfort and disease to ease and to wellness. And as I was saying earlier, that when you're up, your digestive fire is optimized, remember now people are talking about how there's this gut brain connection. Ayurveda has always said that, that your brain health is dependent on your gut health, that your skin health is dependent on your gut health, that your mental health is dependent on your gut health. So it's not just our physical health, but it's our entire health. When your digestive fire is optimized, you have overall ease and health. And then another beautiful thing that I love about Ayurveda is that it doesn't say that health is the absence of disease. Ayurveda invites us into an experience of health that means the doshas are in balance, the seven tissues are strong, the seven fires in the body are optimized. We have clarity of mind, our five senses are sharp, and we have calm and joy in the heart. That is how they define health, which I just absolutely love. And that's what we're seeking to offer to others. So again, Ayurveda says not that you are what you eat. Again, you're not a grape, you're not an apple, you know, you're not rice. <laughs> you're not putting rice in behind your eyeball or into your heart or into your joints, right? It's what your body is doing. Think about how intelligent your body is doing. It's taking that food that you eat and it's making out of that food joints and muscle, bone and tendon, brain matter, right? Eyeballs. It's really beautiful. And even our thoughts and our feelings, the subtle body comes out of the subtle aspect of our food. So in this course, we talk a lot about food. We talk about food for the doshas, food for the time of day, food for the season. And as I said, there's all kinds of, you know, things that I give and handouts and, and giveaways and all kinds of things for that. But the main thing that we're looking at is how do you experience it? And what is it going? And how do you optimize food for digestion? So we talk about the Ayurveda food, we have people go through the four seasonal cleanses, we share how we experience them. Someone in the course might go through the spring cleanse and it's absolutely optimized for them. They love it, they feel light, clear and balanced. And another person doesn't, they, they feel a little bit off because the very vata or the very pitta person may, and it's so great because all the different experiences that everybody has 
helps us learn from one another so that we can learn about our clients. And I just love that we actually rem remember that everyone has intelligence. Everybody has this digestive genius within them. Everybody has Ayurveda within them. And so it's a course where we really do learn a lot from one another. So what I wanted to say is that I give away my four seasonal cleanses, the 30, 40 page booklets. I walk you through, I walk the students through how to run a cleanse so that your investment that you make in this training, you can go and make that money back while you're doing the training or as soon as the training's over. You could run a cleanse in your community. And as I said, you know, yoga studios are a great place to run a cleanse. We've had graduates who invite their eight friends over to the house and they'll start with a meal and then they'll do that together across a week. So it can be friends, it can be your uh, clients. If you're already a health professional, then you can offer it at your, through your clinic or through your practice. I also have a presentation that I've put together for my own sake. And I've given that at the public library here where I live. It was amazing when I actually did this. I was invited by the library to give a class on health and food. And uh, I thought maybe 10, 15 people would show up. 65 people showed up in a community where I thought they would never have heard about Ayurveda. And uh, it, was, it was really ex an extraordinary experience. Giving a free class like that, and you just can use my presentation straight up, um, is a great way to let people know about what you do and then to have clients come to you because they've now gotten a chance to meet you and hear about what you offer. You can also offer these community classes for $10, $20, $30. And then another thing that I, uh, we offer if you do go through AIN2 is really we do a lot of training on how to work with a client. So I give you my intake forms. I give you my protocol forms. You know, I give you the, the, the key pieces of the folders that I would give to a client if they're a vata or they're a pitta or a kapha with instructions for what to eat and lifestyle, et cetera. I mean, it's very, very thorough. I give you what I've used over the past, what is it now? 16 years of being an Ayurvedic practitioner. So, you know, I really want people to be able to come out of this training with the tools to get to work. I wanna empower you to be empowered, to make the money that you will need in order to do this. If you're not gonna make any money out of it, you're not gonna be sustainable it's not gonna be sustainable for you. I want you to be sustained in this so that you can continue to share it with the world. So I really give, hopefully, I, I feel like give a lot. People do say that they're, wow, they got a lot from it. And, and I'm always happy to share more. I wanna share what it is that you would need in order to get started and to get going and to feel supported as you go. I also do two to three mentoring calls after graduation with everybody who's graduated. So just checking in with people, how are you doing? Can I answer any questions? People will come to me, you know, through WhatsApp, we have a community group. People will reach out and say, you know, I had this client, I wasn't sure about this. Can you talk to me about that, Laura? Or we do mentorship calls where people can come back. Here's the issue that I'm having with this client. Can you, what would you do, Laura? Or people can talk about, you know, I did a community cleanse. I feel like this could have gone this way or that way, right? So we check in with each other at least every six months. We checked in last summer. We're going to check in again uh, in about 10 days. And it's really great. I mean, that's the other thing that I love so much about this training is that we make friends. Somebody said that at the end of this, this past year's training. She said, I feel like I got so much from this training. And best of all, I got a whole new group of lifelong friends. And five of the graduates from this 2020 training went on to do an autumn cleanse together. They did an online cleanse. They each took one of the five elements to present on and then to offer a practice. So whether it was a food practice or pranayama practice, they put together a huge booklet. I mean, it was a really quite a thorough training. I was very impressed with them. So that's fun too, because then you make, make friends, you meet people that you can actually partner with as well. So teach you how to do consult consults. I mentioned that, but we really do a lot of training on what we could call Vedic counseling skills. The distinction between the Vedic counseling skills is that in the Vedic sciences, we see that every human being is an eternal and immortal being, that within you is you know, an arch archetype of the cosmos. You have a Maha Lakshmi within you. You have a Maha Shiva within you. You have an incredible power within you. And what we're seeking to do through Vedic counseling is to help you remember help get rid of the dust, 
get rid of the covering that caused us to forget who we are. And then we can reignite the healing power, the power that will help us believe in our potential. So it's quite like absolutely delicious to work with clients in that way. We're not focusing on the problem. Sure, there may be an imbalance, but we are not the healer. We are not offering an herb because the herb is the healer. We remember that the individual we're sitting with, it has seeds of divinity within them, right? They were born of the creative power of the universe. We honor that person for that. And we just simply help them restore the balance needed for them to heal themselves. You are the medicine, right? You are the healer. So just to, uh, this is the AIN level one curriculum. I'm gonna post this onto the VedaWise website today. Uh, we start by just simply talking about Prakriti, the cause of nature and what is nature. We talk about the background, the cosmology. It's quite a thorough training. So we get a really good overview of nature. Um, I've been told it's somewhat of an intuitive way of learning about Ayurveda, but again, it goes back to that pradyaksha. I want to invite you into a very whole experience of nature as an energy of love and an energy of support and invite you into the experience because when you have your own direct experience of nature and its healing powers, then when you work with people, you will speak from your own direct experience. And that gives you an immense authority an authority that can never be doubted or challenged because who can challenge your own experience, right? So this will go up on the website, but this is basically the overview of AIN1 and I've talked to you about AIN2 as well. So the course goes like this. On Saturday morning, you wake up to a new lesson that's two to three hours that is already recorded and it comes in every Saturday morning. The live, there are live classes with me. The first class is live. And then there's a middle class that is live. And so this, this course, the AIN1 goes from February through March. So beginning of February, beginning of March, we kick off the month with live classes with me and lots and lots of group discussion. Then every Saturday after that, you get a recorded class that you can watch in your own good time. It's two to three hours. Every Wednesday morning, you get a class with Angela, Sarah, and Eva Brun. Angela Sarah is a woman deeply, deeply rooted in Ayurveda. It's in every cell in her body. It exudes forth from her. She, to me, is like Mata Bhumi goddess herself. She lives in nature. She walks nature at night, in the morning, all the time. She listens to the voice of mother nature. She teaches a beautiful course on herbs as well. She's also been an Ayurvedic massage practitioner. And so she's really good at inviting you into this deep, beautiful space where you get to consider your own experience. Eva is another beautiful person who's a yoga therapist. She's got a brilliant laugh. And she's also been um, a business consultant and guide. So they really both bring beautiful experience as well as very different personalities, but that are very complementary. So the Wednesday classes are a class for you to share what you've been learning to talk about how you're learning it, how you're implementing it. There's prompts that are given. So it's really about discussion, but it's about learning through discussion and they are required. So apart from that, your homework is one week, it might be go for a walk and notice the five elements and notice how each one impacts you. The next one might be, what is your dosha? What are you gonna do to balance your dosha this week, right? Another week, it might be make these meals Notice how they impact you and talk about it in Wednesday's class. Now it's work with spices. So everything is about living the Ayurveda. It's things you do anyway. You go for a walk, you make a meal, but it's about something more focused so that you can really learn how it's affecting you. You see? So really the homework could be anywhere from 20 minutes to four or five hours. It depends on how much you want to work with it, but it is all something that integrates into your daily life. I really wanna make this a living experience for you. By the way, a bonus that you get as soon as you sign up is you get uh, my introduction to Ayurveda cooking. It's an eight part video series with booklet, um, which you can watch. That's your in the kitchen kind of training. And that comes to you as a bonus. It's, I think it's like a $279 training that I had originally created for spirituality and health. 
And um, so that comes to you as soon as you sign up and you can get started on that right away. In terms of how do you complete, how do you get your certificate? For AIN1, I have a 20 minute call one-on-one -on -one with you where we talk about what you've learned. People often show up to that saying, I feel a little bit nervous, but I don't want people to be nervous. It is a kind of oral, but it's not for me to give you an oral exam, but rather I do ask you questions. I wanna know what you've learned. I wanna know how I can teach better. So I'm asking you, what are the five elements? What are the three doshas? What are the four states of Agni? How can we restore Agni, right? But at the same time, what I'm wanting to also hear is, what did you learn? How did this make a difference for your life? What are you going to do to take this forward? How do you see this making an impact in your own life? So it's a conversation, and that gives us completion, and that simple, simple, simple. You don't have to write me a paper, right? It's just that. The book that the, the manual for our training, well, the book, the required reading is my book, Ayurveda Cooking for Beginners. And I also think Dr. Vasant Lad's book on Ayurveda is an excellent companion. But then I create, I've created a manual and you'll get the manual. Um, and the manual gives more detail and more specifics, which comes along with the training. So the completion is simply that, just a 20 minute phone call with me, which is also kind of a coaching call to help you figure out or to help you implement what you've learned and figure out how you're going to take it forward. So I want to remind you, if you are curious about your own dosha, I've got a dosha quiz on my website. And um, the AIN2 completion is we do um, a group presentation. And so the AIN2 is a little bit more, but of course I want to make sure that people have uh, learned you know, these counseling skills. And then also they get to, that is where they do get to write me a one page paper and just tell me what they learned and how they're gonna take this forward. So very, very simple. The biggest amount of homework is if you go to AI and two, you're gonna to have to sit down and write a paper. But again, it's about inviting you to consider what have I learned? Who am I now? And where am I going with this, right? And by the end of AI and two, uh, Eva also does a really beautiful hour and a half presentation on how to create a website, how to use social media to help you with marketing, you know, and also, by the way, if you are a student of mine, you may see this, I share out on my Instagram page anytime, Angela Sarah knows this, if, if I get tagged by any one of my students, I'll share it out. So we get to, we just, we just love each other and we're just here to share and support and grow it. Okay. Bernard, do you want to open it up to Q&A? And I also would love if we've got somebody who's got a question. I can see right here, Ceylon from Switzerland. Thank you, my dear, for being with us. So we can definitely do a little mini case study if you're curious. But since Angela Sarah's here, let me just introduce you to her first. Angela Sarah also came with us to India last year. We had such a beautiful time. Thank you so much for being with us. This is why I keep coming back all this amazing love. Oh my goodness. This is this is what it's all about. Uh, Laura is a wisdom keeper. She is a divine being. She's so loving and approachable and accessible. And we build a loving community to learn, have direct experience, ask our questions. And it is a living science. I've been studying Ayurveda for a little while now, and I've been, I went more of the school route and um, the textbook and the learning in that way, which was more through the mind. And then I met Laura and I started to be able to integrate and have these direct experiences. And I realized that's how I love to learn. So I keep coming back because it's endless. There's, there's so many layers to our being, as we all know, and Ayurveda is all encompassing. So we might approach it through the food and the herbs and the spices, and it just, it just keeps going. There's so many layers to healing. And in this course, we, we talk about it all. We, we really reveal all of the layers and the food pieces are amazing. Laura's recipes are so delicious and she freely gives and shares, encourages us to do that. And the ripple effects that it has um, out into the world. It's just, it's just such a joy to be a part of. So thank you for yeah. having me back. <laughs> and India, I just have to say that was my first time going and I knew Laura was the woman to go with as soon as I found out about it. And I ended up stretching my experience to go for an entire month. 
uh, all of October, in the last two weeks, I met up with Laura and the group of AIN students, and it was just epic. It was so epic and beautiful and a spice villages. And I dream about those things and I can't wait to go back at some point again. Yeah. yeah. So thank you. It was epic. It is so beautiful to have, have these friendships. Thank you, Angela, Sarah. What I love about what you just said is I just want, I just love that our students are so supported. I feel like thanks to you and I, Eva, who is also like you, just so full of love and joy that they are, our students are so well taken care of. And again, I think we really do learn from each other. I think being in circle together is also a medicine. Sharing our life experiences, sharing what we're learning, sharing our dosha and the food and our food issues, our digestive issues. To be able to talk about it is its own medicine. And I think what the world needs most right now is we need to optimize health. We need community, right, and connection. And I think we need some economic freedom. And that's what this course gives you, all three. <laughs> yeah, great. So first I wanna start, if there's, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. If there's any questions about the training, let's start there and then I'm going to, um, thank you for, Angela Sarah, by the way, wrote in the chat where she is. And Christine is calling in from, from Wisconsin. Does anyone have a question about the, this course and this training before I go into? Uh, specific questions about digestion. Thank you for all your the other things you wrote in the chat box, Angela, Sarah. So if you do have a question about the training, go ahead and unmute and ask while I read your questions. Mm. I love that so many people have good digestion. Thanks, Erica. Okay. So I'm not getting, I'm not hearing a question on the webinar. So let me go ahead and, and speak to some of the questions here. Um, Clea writes, I just gave up coffee. So my digestion is confused. Does that mean that coffee was helping you with digestion? I know a lot of people drink coffee for that very reason. They say it helps them go in the morning. If that's the case, there's a couple of things that you could do. You could drink warm just warm water in the morning might help, but something else that might help is to have warm water with cumin seed. Um, and it really depends on your, depends on your Agni, which we'd have to talk more about, and it depends on your dosha. But if you tend to run more vata, you may have more dryness in your digestive tract. And then a little ghee in some hot water in the morning on an empty stomach will help lubricate the digestive tract and that'll help to stimulate peristalsis. But also hot water, warm water in the morning, will help to increase that circulation and get the flow going. And then a good brisk walk, maybe it's just a walk around the block or some jumping jacks, seriously. And then it may take a couple of days for the digestive system to rebalance itself, but it will rebalance. And I think from autumn to mid spring, starting your day with a cup of hot water for everybody is a great idea. It can be warm water with some fresh lemon juice or it can be warm water with a little bit of ghee, if especially if you tend to run dry, or it can be warm water with a favorite spice. And one of the great ones, as I said, is cumin. Cumin is excellent for metabolism. It's good for stimulation, gets things going. If you're more kapha, it could be a warm water in the morning with some turmeric, some black pepper, and some cumin. That's a really great one to, to get things stimulated and get things going in the morning. When you're seeking to restore health, if you're in an Ayurvedic clinic, if you're coming out of surgery, so post-surgery, for instance, instead of giving somebody a hamburger or a dried piece of shoe leather, <laughs> which is what you often get in the hospital, it looks like, we would give somebody soup or kitchari, something very light and easy to digest because it takes so much energy to digest food. And yet we need that energy to heal, to restore after surgery or if we've got chronic illness. So it's a lot of times when somebody has chronic illness, digestion will start to shut down in order to preserve energy to deal with whatever else the body is dealing with. In that case, it's good to eat things like mashed banana, banana with some cinnamon and just add some boiled water, hot, hot water to it so it's warm as you take it in. It might be good to have some yogurt with your favorite spice. You could have a yogurt lassi. And I'm talking about kind of baby food, rice porridge, really simple foods, easy to digest, no strain on the system, 
add some spice, make sure you have it warm and just eat little amounts. Don't try to force the food in. Don't try to eat too much. And then again, we'll have to talk more about that one-on-one. -on -one. So Stephanie says today it's, it's often sensitive and slow moving. So of course, sensitive, we would associate with the vata uh, digestion and slow moving, we associate with kapha. But the confusion, and one of the reasons that Ayurveda can be complicated, is that one dosha can drive another dosha. Vata dosha, when we have a vata imbalance, it can look like kapha. Because when we have a vata imbalance, the whole body can seek to slow us down. So we can feel burnt out, we can feel excessively fatigued, we can feel depleted. We can even get not just stagnation, but even some swelling. I know I had a situation where I major digestive issues. I felt very swollen for a couple of years. Finally, an Ayurvedic doctor, after many, many Ayurvedic doctors suggested different things. This one, genius one, said, this is a vata issue. It's in your digestive system. We need to address the vata. And what's happened is, especially since, thanks to this COVID, being in one place, not traveling, getting regulated, 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 it's helped to really reduce the vata in my system. And that's reduced what seemed like kapha. So I have a first-hand experience of that. I don't know if that's what's happening with you, Stephanie, but the slow moving could be a result of the vata. So regulate is the most important thing. Same time to bed every night, same time up every morning, meals always at the same time. Just try to be very regulated in your daily activities. And then always, of course, warm meals, very unctuous, good liquid, good amount of oils, and a, the proper kind of spices. Gentle spicing, favorite spice, I think autumn is like the perfect example of what lots of people would be eating, cooked, gently spiced and unctuous. Okay, so Aurelia says, oh, you're from Aurelia, Janine. <laughs> Janine says, I love the name of Aurelia, Ontario. Digestion really fluctuates depending on what you eat. So you're definitely in the middle of Vata season, right? Ontario is probably getting cold, it's probably dry. I know some people, not so much maybe in Ontario, but I know Colorado just had a whole dump of snow. So it's getting, it's getting colder up there, up there in the north. Um, and so it's Vata season, whether or not you feel it, your Vata Prakriti. Um, fluctuation of digestion is a Vata. That's a Vata experience. So Vata is wind and wind is always changing. So one of the things that we associate with Vata is that changing, that fluctuation, that variability. So it's really important, again, to regulate, to eat foods that are easy on your digestive system. Don't, we don't want to challenge digestion too much. As we're restoring and strengthening Agni, let's give it a break. And so gentle spicing helps to strengthen Agni, foods that are easy to digest. That means cooked. That means um, you know, light grains like rice, or some, even something like buckwheat or quinoa. Uh, but And also unctuous. We need that oil to go through the digestive tract to help keep things moving, right? Does that, that help? I can see you listening up there. Is that helpful? Okay. Any other question on that? Okay. Yeah, focus on reducing the vata, and that should help to strengthen your agni. And then once the agni is strong, then we should be able to eat, you know, we should be able to eat most things. I love that Carolina Bravo has no problems with digestion. You know, the Italian diet is really optimized for their climate, their weather, etc. And you'll see in the Italian, um, in the Italian foods, they might start with pasta, you know, and then they have their main course, and then they have their salad at the end. And one of the things that we talk about in this Ayurvedic training is the three stages of digestion. And that's a really key thing to understand in terms of what to eat first, what to eat middle, what to eat less. The Italians without maybe ever having learned about Ayurveda, or maybe they did learn about Ayurveda from their travels and their exchanges with, with the people of India. But they do in their, in the way in which they eat, they do have this understanding of the three stages of digestion. So I find, and like, for instance, if you look at um, the, the tree, three colors, the tree colores in salata, the um, mozzarella di bufala, the tomato, and the basil. Basil is a really excellent spice for digesting dairy and dairy products. It's one of the top spices, herbs, for digesting dairy and dairy products. So right there, you have the sour taste of the tomato that boosts digestion, and then you have the basil that'll help to digest the mozzarella, right? 
it's actually a perfect Ayurvedic plate. And of course that comes probably out of, I also think one of the things, it's not just trial and error, but one of the beautiful things about nature is often when food combinations taste perfect, delicious, just right, it's because they're actually just right for our digestion. Because we evolved to taste what we need, right? So a perfect food combination should taste good as well as digest easily. Okay, so good. It's so nice to see you, Christina. I miss you. I, I sometimes will walk down the streets, especially for some reason when I go by Swadi, I think, oh, I miss Christine. And I hope she's well and her children are flourishing. So thanks for being here. <laughs> we'll catch up later, I hope. And Simran is in Delhi. And of course, India has uh, a lot of Ayurveda to its food culture, but a lot of Ayurveda is different from Indian food. So somebody said to me, you know, I've been cooking from your your book and I wonder if you have any suggestions. I want it to taste like my favorite Indian restaurant. And I wrote to him and I said, Ayurveda is not necessarily Indian food, right? Although there's a lot of Ayurveda in Indian food. So we don't really eat white potatoes, for instance, and there's some good dishes in, in Indian restaurants that will cook with white potatoes, but we don't eat nightshades in Ayurveda. So certain examples like that. Still, if somebody is from India or your family's from India, then you may already have a lot of these food practices built in to your family life. Okay, so Nicole has digestive issues, but I don't know what they are. So I want to get to Ceylon. Now, Ceylon is very beautiful. Ceylon, if you want to put into the chat box what your IG feed is, because Ceylon is in Switzerland, and she's been doing a lot of beautiful posts on food and food health and nutrition. She's also a yoga teacher, so she's been talking about that as well. And it's really been great to follow her. And we did an IG live together recently. So always slow with digestion, typical vata. Now, what I think is so interesting about Ceylon is that this is a great example of, again, how Ayurveda can be a little bit confusing. To me, when I see Ceylon and I see all that she's doing in the world, I think, wow, that's a beautiful example of the power of pitta, of pitta dosha. That's somebody who's got clarity, courage, focus, determination, efficiency. She's a great coach. She helps motivate others. She's like, come on, everybody, let's go do it. We can do it, right? That power of positive light. And then here she's talking about, actually, no, she has a vata digestion. It's why we can never make assumptions about another. That's why it's so powerful to learn from one another in this training, because we need to always ask questions to dig deeper and, you know, prompt someone to share with us more about what time do they wake up? What time do they go to bed? How well do they sleep? What's their, excuse me, but what's the bowel movement like? How much water do they drink? What do they eat every day, et cetera? What is the climate like where you live? What is the season like right now? So if Ceylon is in Switzerland, mountain areas are more vata dosha. She is actually, I think, close to Lake Geneva, which brings in a little bit more of the water, wet element of kapha. But mostly you could think of, a, of Switzerland as a little bit more of a vata place to live. And she's also got uh, some vata in her digestion. So it's vata season, which is October or autumn. And so she's loving Ayurveda and she has an issue with dairy. So it's interesting too, because dairy is said to be the best food for pitta dosha. And a lot of the yoga sages lived in the mountains and often would live on a diet basically of warm milk, boiled milk. A lot of them, of course, being pitta dosha. And so it is interesting because at the same time, pitta dosha people are often the ones with food allergies, whether it's gluten intolerance, lactose intolerance, etc. So pitta tends to be sensitive and it's almost as if they're such fighters that their, their digestive system or their immune system is kind of fighting everything. Like it's going out there and it's, I'm going to go get that thing. <laughs> so it can have an overactive immune system, right? An autoimmune then dysfunction. So one of the things that we might think about with Ceylon really is simply how do we strengthen digestion for her? And it would be great to strengthen digestion so much that Ceylon can then once again take dairy, even if she chooses not to. Okay. And I think, you know, one of the things we also talk a lot about, and I talk a lot about this in my blog, that Ayurveda loves ghee and Ayurveda formally loved dairy, really because it was a vegetarian culture and dairy was one of the ways to get some good protein. Now, this is a, comes from a 
a people who once upon a time might have had one cow who kind of roamed in. I've seen pictures of homes where the cow is inside the home. So it roams in and out, like the cow is part of the family. Cows give milk to their calves in the spring and always tend to produce more milk than their own calf needs. And that excess milk would go to the family. And the way that the family would then have enough milk to last throughout the year would be to turn it into ghee or yogurt or cheese. And so this was a way of getting some extra protein in and having that all year long. Nowadays, when milk and cows and all the way, all that's going on has become factory farming, et cetera, milk isn't even that good for us anymore, if, especially if not if it's pumped with hormones and, and other toxins. So we do talk about alternatives to dairy in the training for people who are pure vegan. Another example like that is honey. Honey is excellent for kapha because of the enzymes, because of the acids, it's a great sweetener. It's very good, it's very lightening, very purifying, detoxifying for kapha. There's no substitute for it, should never be cooked of course, but still we can give suggestions for alternatives if kapha does want something, okay? So I think that's it. I don't think there's any more questions. I love your comments, Angela, Sarah. And to answer your question about herbs, um, the next training that I wanna offer will focus specifically on herbs. So this training is food and spices, as well as practices that help with physical digestion, but also mental and emotional digestion. So what I want this to be is something that anyone can do, both in terms of the, as a counselor or a consultant, and also in terms of the clients that you meet. So we don't have to, and this is something I've been really focusing on lately with my cleanses, is, is paring it down to show people that food and spice alone can really help heal, can really restore balance, that we don't need all the bells and whistles. Now, that's not to say that the herbs aren't very powerful, because they are, but we know that Ayurveda says, without right diet, medicine is of no use, right? And so the herbs are considered the medicine that have no use, that are not effective, unless the diet is there first. So diet can restore ag Agni, diet can dissolve Ama, and diet can balance the dosha. So the next training that I'm going to do is I'm gonna take 12 key herbs, and we'll, we'll look at that. So that'll be like a level four. And is honey aggravating to vata? Honey is drying, so it can be aggravating to vata, yes. And hi, Morgan. Morgan Anderson, hi. Morgan Anderson and I used to work together, did our training, I've done some training with you. So Morgan asks this great question, if we've done some training with you, would you recommend both levels? I would recommend both, both levels because even if you've done training with me, this training is very specific. But having said that, you could probably just go to AIN2 as long as you do some, some good review. Uh, but the way that I teach the Ayurvedic AIN1, and AIN is the acronym, and AIN is, is the Bija, I am AIM is the Bija mantra for Saraswati, the goddess of learning, education, and wisdom. So AIN is our, our acronym. And AIN1 is a very, it's a very unique way of teaching Ayurveda. So I would say it's, yes, you can get away with not doing it, but I think you'd benefit from doing it. Also, I don't want anybody to not be able to do it. So if you feel like you need a scholarship or a payment plan, just write to me. If, and if anyone needs it though, I'm absolutely willing to help and um, help you have access to this. Okay, so let's see, would this course be doable for someone dealing with chronic health issues? I think so, I think it's great. I've had people take it and have said that it's really, really helped them. What I love about this is that this is about helping you first. If you have the direct experience of it, imagine the story, imagine how powerful your own story would be in working with others, right? If you can say, wow, this Ayurveda really helped me, then people with the same issue or similar issues are gonna be so drawn to working with you. As Desikachar said, and I studied yoga with TKV Desikachar, and he would say, don't look for Buddha, look for an Acharya. He said, Buddha doesn't know what you've lived through. Buddha is great as an example of enlightenment, but look for an Acharya, one who has had the same experiences you've had, and is just a little further along the road. They will know how to take you by the hand and walk you forward and take you to where they've gotten to. An Acharya is someone who's living the practices, a yoga Acharya, an Ayurveda Acharya. So Michelle, just imagine what kind of an Acharya you would be for others. And again, if you have any further questions, please just email me. We can always hop on a call if you wanna talk about things specific to you. 
and um, like I said, we can we can work out ways to make it supportive for you. I love what Angela Sarah said. I I want this to be a healing experience for you as well as an empowering experience for you. So I just need to know what you need from me. And so please email or call if you want. Okay. Beautiful. Thanks, you guys. Thank you, Erica. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Kevin, for being here. Thank you, everyone. And we'll see you next time. Ha <laughs> ha.